First of all, I should start with the word Shalom. Shalom means peace. Hello, how are you? I'm a Bombay 800 person. Marathi Manus. Uh, the first reaction, the gut feeling is, oh, we didn't know there were Jews in India. Um, I've noticed that the Jewish women in India really cook. <laughs> they are the chefs in the house. When you travel to India, you are likely to land in Bombay first. The gateway to India. Bombay recently has achieved an unusual distinction and that is being one of the important Jewish centers in South Asia. 50% of the entire Jewish population of India lives in Bombay and the neighboring town Thane. Mumbai, as Bombay is renamed now, is a world city, cosmopolitan in nature and the business center of India the most modern Indian city by far. Beneath the veneer of modernism and progress lies the religious face of the city. Many Eastern and Western faiths coexist here peacefully. Hinduism is the religion of the majority people here, a religion known for its spirituality and tolerance. Other minority groups include Muslims, Christians and many others. One such small group is the Bombay Jews. Elijah Jacob is the country manager with the American Jewish Distribution Committee and an important figure amongst the Bombay Jews. I remember as a small kid, uh, I used to go with my grandfather to the services in one of the oldest synagogues in Bombay, which was uh, built around 1796 the Shahar Harahamim Synagogue, the Gate of Mercy Synagogue, which is at Manvi, near uh, Viti Station, a little before Viti Station. And uh, there was a distinct aura behind attending synagogue services. There was also a temple nearby. There was also a mosque nearby. And I mean, all of them existed in very uh, favorable conditions in terms of everybody coexisted together. So while we used to pray our own prayers, at the same time we understood that Bombay is a city where different religions coexist. And it's important to have that mutual respect and admiration for each other, however different you may be. And I think that is a lesson which is very important, which I learned, that you have to respect the traditions of others besides your own. And I think that's one of has been the greatest influence of Bombay as a cosmopolitan city on any Jew. Rabbi Joshua is the true face of the young and modern Bombay Jews, currently involved in many community projects and the right person to answer the confusing question, what is a rabbi? What is a rabbi? A rabbi is not a Jewish priest. Priest class is a, is a whole family in Judaism. They are called the Kohanim. And it is a very mistaken uh, thing in India. Uh, rabbi means a teacher. He is a teacher of theology, a teacher of Jewish ideas. A teacher of the truth, basically. Torah means the teaching. Torah is the holy book of the Jews. So the rabbi is a person who, traditionally the rabbi was not also, there was no institution as the rabbi and he had a rabbi's job. He was the 
normal shoemaker or the water carrier or maybe if he was rich, he was a farmer or a landlord. And he was also a rabbi, he was authority in law, authority about Jewish ideas and Jewish theology. Later on, because of we went down uh, in our spirituality, the congregation wanted to have a full-time rabbi separated from a normal unit. But that, that's not. A rabbi was a person who knew a little more about what the law wants, or knew a little more about theology, and he also was, I mean, the teacher for the congregation. That's what a rabbi is. Isra Moses, an enthusiastic Jew and community leader from Tani City. He has been a participant in many international Jewish meets. We have never experienced any hardships, any sort of any discrimination or any sort of uh, inferiority, inferiority complex in any manner. We have always lived like Jews, we have always loved the local community and we have, you, we have stayed with them with, uh, in a harmonious way, in a very, uh, what you may say, in a very loving manner so that we could all come together. Just let me give you an idea about the three distinct communities of Jews who live in India. The oldest are the Bene Israels who came around, it is believed, around the destruction of the Second Temple, 17 AD. And they came down via what is called today the Red Sea, via the Gulf of Elat, the Red Sea down the Gulf of Yemen, and then onto the Arabian Sea and were shipwrecked around the Konkan coast in a place called Naugao, where there are still big a big monument is built for the earliest graves that were found there. Uh, so those are the Bene Israels. Then came the Cochini Jews who came around the time of the Spanish Inquisition from Spain. And they have, been, they have settled much further down south of, um, of India in Cochin. And then you have the third Jews who came very recently are the Baghdadi Jews, came around 1832 when the Pashas overtook Iraq and then they escaped through the Silk Route, what we call Afghanistan, Pakistan into and came into Bombay and Calcutta. So these are the Baghdadi Jews. Uh, one of the most notable were the Sassoons. David Sassoon, undoubtedly the tallest figure amongst the Bombay Jews. A generous donor for worthy causes. He donated money to construct synagogues, hospitals and schools for the citizens of Bombay. Gateway of India is the biggest landmark in Bombay city. David Sassoon donated a substantial amount for the construction of this monument. David Sassoon indeed was a man with great vision. Today, the library constructed with his donations is an important part of Bombay's literary life. This building is an important heritage building in Bombay. It is well managed by an efficient committee. The library has won awards for conserving and restoring the building to its original grandeur. Rabbi Benjamin Abraham, a senior rabbi and an expert on the world jury. But recently, Bombay city became a very highly developed city and a commercial capital. The Jews of the suburbs, Jews of the Konkan area moved a lot to Bombay and they took Bombay city as a modern city, as a highly developed city, a commercial city and they became a part of the city. They even started having their, their Bombay dress, a modern dress, and English was the language spoken here. They took English as the language, and they started working. Many people have worked in a very high post in Bombay. So Bombay City became a part of a Jewish and Bombay together. I'm a Bombayite, 100%. Marathi Manus. <laughs> That's what I am. That I got an opportunity to go and study for six years in Israel it doesn't change me in terms of what I am. Uh, as Bombay, I, I think I can understand first, I mean, we have to remember in India, there was never any anti-Semitism. And I grew up with this culture, I, I mean, I am a product of this culture, so that's, that's something which I don't understand how it happened. It was in Yad, Yad Vashem is a museum in Israel. My first visit to Yad Vashem was a shock. 
I knew that whatever happened in the Second World War, it looked like six million Jews, but it never registered till till I was there. You know, and I still can't understand. Give, bring, being brought up in India has its beautiful flavor of you know brotherhood, and uh, we, I grew up in a chal. On my I mean left side, we had Muslims, and on on the other side, I, I was the only fam Jewish family in my child. And on the right, we had uh, Christians. We grew up together, everything. One of the things is if you want to get connected strongly to Judaism, you must know the language in which the forefathers, our forefathers prayed, the traditions, the customs. Our prayer books are all in Hebrew and that's why it plays a very important role. With that in mind, we find that in India there is hardly any usage of Hebrew in the day-to-day -day activities and today in daily life. And one of the things of this community center which we set up is to promote the language of Judaism. A lot of migration to Israel by the Indian Jews, the community was dwindling and we felt if we have to retain a very uh, strong Jewish identity and make them uh, feel connected Jewishly, we have to develop informal Jewish educational programs which would address some of these needs in the community and especially for the youngsters who would be able to identify themselves strongly. We developed a number of programs. Today, we have programs for all age groups. The programs are for all age groups, from small children to the elderly. At one pinup board, we noticed a poster of Ten Commandments prepared by the children. Going one step further, there was an Eleventh Commandment too. Do not tell lies, it said. Eighty percent Bombay Jews have reported Marathi as their mother tongue. Marathi language has a special place in a Jew's heart. Marathi is like embedded into a Jewish person. He, though he knows his Hebrew language, he can read the scriptures, he can read everything. But Marathi is the love that he has had for the language. And this language of Marathi, he has taken to all over, wherever the Jews have migrated. Wherever the Indian Jews have migrated to Canada, to Australia, to London, to America, to Israel, they have taken this language. You will be surprised to know that in Israel, we have got a Marathi uh, Sammelan. We have we had in, organized and we had hosted the Marathi International Saitya Sammelan. Many books are written in Marathi and Marathi is their strongest link with the local community. When I became more religious, I started wearing this cap. Many people started asking, are you Jewish? When did you come from Israel? I said, I'm Indian, I'm a Maharashtrian, I speak Marathi. They were surprised to know there are Marathi Jews in Bombay. Today, the Jews are about 5,500 in India, out of which there are about 1,800, 40% of that staying in Thane. Thane has become the largest Jewish population and thereby making it an important Jewish center the world over. This synagogue that you can see came into being with the Jews coming into Thane and they felt the need to build a synagogue. So they gathered the money among themselves and they built a synagogue in 1879. This synagogue was established on 30th December 1879 whereby the Jews uh, got the money together and they built such a synagogue. Now after 120 years we felt the need of renovating the synagogue 
This was a complete synagogue which has got road bearing walls. You can see the synagogue, the walls are load bearing. And with that, you can't see a pillar there. So to change the ceiling, which was in a dilapidated condition, we had to replace the ceiling with a concrete one. Thereby, we took the help of an RCC consultant and an architect, and we gave him all the ideas that we saw abroad in other synagogues, the architecture, the interior, and thereby such a beautiful synagogue has come out. We had not planned out as to how the ceiling would look depending upon the condition of the building. It was an old monument, so we had to take all possible precautions. But we did it in such a manner. It has come out so beautifully, and I am sure that the Lord God's hand of miracle was with us. You count any two rows when you take, there are 10. Altogether, there are about 40 stars in the synagogue. Now, 40 is a number which signifies the 40 years the Jewish people are wandering. 40 is a number which is very significant to the Jewish people. As such, the 10 is a number where we require minimum 10 people for any religious ceremony. 10 also is a number where 10 plagues have taken place. So taking all this into account, you know, these stars have come out religiously so well. Yes, of course, bring light to expel the darkness from your mind. For many centuries, the existence of the Indian Jews was not known to the Western Jews. But recently, the interaction has increased immensely. It has helped both the streams. Many Western Jews now visit India to exchange views and learn more about the Indian Jews. Ariel Tarova is a Jewish educator from America and wants to know more about the Indian Jews. It was amazing. 